For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was mean. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. of the show RPI Radio Pastor Ozzy and you're not entering my hour long show starting from 7 to 8 p.m. and yes I got a little lowness in my voice today trying to hold back the tears God had gave me a word it's, and um, it's not a very popular word um, he spoke it to me today as I was talking to a friend and he spoke it to me Sunday when I was talking to my bishop but um I'm kind of saddened right now and hurting, but uh, the RPI I get with that in a minute. Um, a couple ways you can listen to is you can go to our website, which is a wcc dot stream on dot fm. That is wcc dot stream on dot fm. That is our live feed, and you can listen to it live. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm trying to hold myself together till I get to talking because this is something that is really God been laying on my spirit and I just want people to understand what is going on here in our nation. Uh, excuse me for crying. Uh, I often do that a lot because I am a man, I am a human and I care about people. But let me try to get through this. Um let me try to get through this announcement then we'll get into what we are um, supposed to talk about but um if you are listening on uh the radio station that means you are listening to wcc 99.9 fm and um that means you're listening to our radio station that's in augusta or in the south carolina area augusta georgia or south carolina area you are listening to one of the greatest radio stations i think of all times um, but if you decide to go out of area, you can do our stream on what I just said, or you can go to our website, which is a uh, WCC dot. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it is W W dot CW Christ dot com. That is W dot CW Christ dot com. That is our website. You can check us out. And then RPI is looking for a sponsor. Those who want to sponsor RPI in the last days. I'd be uh, highly appreciated. It's all about the radio station, never about me. Um, but, um, but you know, you can uh, do that. Uh, you can go to our website. Um, and we got a PayPal. Just put sponsor in, in the last days, and you can also do that, too. Um, just notify uh, the radio station. They will let me know who my sponsor is and get some things going. Um, if y'all listen tomorrow... At 2 o'clock, it is a rebroadcast, so that means I will not be here. I will be at work or be at home or wherever I be, but it is a rebroadcast every Wednesday at 2. Um, got a couple of things that I do want to say in scriptures. Uh, it is hard 
for me to do this. I didn't want to do it, but Lord told me to say this. Um, you know what? Let me clean myself up, you know, stop the crying because it's a word from the Lord. God has given me this word. And I'm going to play some David Wilkinson. Y'all give me a few minutes so I can get myself together. This is a very hard word for RPI. It is very hard. And it's something I have to do. Um, and I have to say, as you know, I did put it up on my um, page and what it's all about. So I'm going to go <laughs> and put up the logo because I don't want y'all to see me breaking down here. But um, anyway, listen to those, this David Wilkinson. Say, Are you ready for the coming of Christ? Are you ready for the coming of Jesus? The truth is this generation knows less about the coming of the Lord than any past generation. This generation is least expectant of the coming of the Lord. It is seldom preached in American pulpits. It's seldom preached anywhere on the face of the earth today that Jesus Christ is coming very soon. See, we've settled in a comfortable lifestyle. We are living in the most profitable time in the history of the world, they tell us now. And the coming of the Lord would be very disruptive for many people of their good life. I've heard Christians literally mock the message of the any time return to the Lord Jesus Christ. Literally mock it. Peter said of in the last days, mockers will come with their mockings, falling after their own lust and saying, Where is the sign of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue just as they were from the beginning of creation. But the day of the Lord will come, Peter said, as a thief in the night, into which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works therein shall be burned up. But now, folks, the cry, I believe, is going to be heard more and more in the true church of Jesus Christ. The Lord is coming. Jesus is coming. Get ready. Get prepared. He's telling us that just like in Noah's time and Lot's time, they're going to ignore the call. He said, if you want to see the sign, oh, you look around, see how my message is being ignored. Just look at the, uh, the stupor and the hearts and the minds and the blindness of the people. You want a sign? That's your sign, just as in Noah, and just as then. It was that premeditated turning off of the message of Noah. The premeditated turning off of the testimony of Lot, a righteous man in the midst of that city. And the premeditated warning of angels just before the moment came. And now we have that premeditated rejection Folks, I know in my heart that the majority of Christians today that have turned off this message at one time had it burning in their heart that Jesus was coming. And they have turned it off. Absolutely turned it off. There's some of you sitting in this church this morning, you have totally turned off this idea of His coming. And you bought into a doctrine that it's thousands of years away. I'm going to ask you again. Are you really ready? For the coming of the Lord. Are you sure you're fully prepared? As I let David Wilkinson play in the background, God has spoke to me to look at today. Very and um, actually, the Lord makes very, very he talked to my bishop, and Matthew we was talking, me and my pastor Jesus was talking, and, um, comes forth with a description now and um, we was talking about about what's going on here in America. You know, what's going on here in the USA and different events and everything that is happening. And um, and God just came and, and my bishop said, man, it's, it's the spirit of murder and death. Uh, my bishop, Bishop Mars L. Wim of Turning Point Restoration Ministries. And uh, that is my church. I am an elder there. Uh, that's where I reside. That's where I preach at on uh, some occasion. Uh, and um. And God just spoke to me. And uh, as I walked off, we were just talking. He said, man, there's just so much things that are happening in this nation that we are being ignored. You know, we're not doing the work. We're not even sharing the gospel. We just being quiet and 
God just just fed up. And um, as I began to go home, I began to pray, and I was praying in my closet, and God just spoke to me, and He shared these things to me, and He said, "Son, I'm getting ready, not getting ready. The spirit of death has been released upon this land, America." He said that um, I have released this spirit, and He told me to go to Revelation six. And as I go to Revelation 6, I actually read the whole chapter. And before I, I read Revelation 6, never don't let people tell you be afraid to read Revelations. Revelation is look, look what it says. It says the revelation, the book, first chapter of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show the servant things which must shortly come pass, shortly come to pass, and to the servant. Of John, who bear record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and all the things which he saw. Blessed, blessed he that readeth, that read, and they that hear the word of this prophecy and keep these things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And God say, Blessed. So, when you read the book of Revelation, God is God is saying he will bless you for reading it. And a lot of times we don't want to read it because we're so afraid of what we're going to see and what we it's like, you know, the ostrich that put his head in the sand. You know, as long as he don't see the destruction, he's all right, but you're still going to die. And I hope that the this playing in the background is not kind of distracting from what I'm saying. I just I love Dave Wilkins. He's part of one of the all time end time preachers that I heard that really stood up the truth in the time that he was living in. And I like playing this because the simple fact that I just love what he's teaching and preaching. He never let anybody motivate him or he never let anybody that 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 um that 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 um you know kind of took him to change his sermon. Some people say, oh you always preach about this. Once you preach about something different but when it's burning in your spirit, when it's in your heart, you have no other choice but to share it. And the book of Revelation, start with chapter six, and, and it's hard for me to read this because the simple fact that this is what God has spoken. He's not playing. And he's saying, when I saw the lamb open one of the seals and I heard, and it was the noise of thunder. And once the four beasts saying, come and see, and I saw, behold, a white horse and he that sat on the, he that sat on him had a bow and a crown and was given to him. And he went forth conquering the conquerors. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. Now let's, the first one say conquering the conquerors. That's what we're seeing right now. We are seeing nations conquering other nations. Right now, America being conquered by other nations, Russia, China. People don't understand. People don't even know that we are going in a war with Iran because Iran and they say it was Iran, but Yemen trying to say they did it and another jihadist group. But bomb the oil tank of Saudi Arabia. Well, we friends with Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia. That's that's why the gas went up 10, 20 cent because of they they say that they that um that Saudi Arabia was bombed. The oil rigs, 50% of, uh, I think 40% of the oil was bombed, and Saudi Arabia is our neighbor. We we say that long as, you know, we're going to protect them, and it, it just got to the point where it's just getting out of hand. This this what it is, conquerors, conquer. we got Russia, China, all these countries want to fight us. Iran want to fight us. Um, Verse chapter three, and when he had opened the second seal, I heard a, I heard the second beast say, "Come and see." And there was a horse who was red. Power was given unto him, and said, "Therefore, taking peace from the earth, and that they shall kill one another." And they was given to him a great sword. And this is what God said. This is what happened. There is. No peace in America at all. 
I don't care how much you say that it is. I don't know. Some of y'all say, well, Trump going to bring peace. He's the savior. Trump is not the savior. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it again. Trump was put in office to judge America, to bring havoc. And that's what he has doing. Win against all these elites and powers and different, even the Republicans and Democrats and all this. And, you know, God just, you know, he's saying that I'm bringing judgment on a nation that once represented me. The forefathers named represent Christ. A lot of people always say RPI, yeah, but what about the slavery? Yes, yeah, slavery was awful. It was terrible. And I could, you know, it was just plain God awful, especially for us black Americans in this nation. But Christianity was one of the strong points in America. It changed. It, it Matter of fact, it created, and I've been learning, you know, that most <laughs> uh, uh, black people was Republicans. Because the Democrat was the one that was keeping the slavery. They was the one that was killing. They was the one that doing the Joe Crow, uh, 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 Jim Crow and all this other stuff. And then there was another Republican. So I've been learning a lot of things lately. Just on my personal time. And yes, it was turned. But this nation now has not represented Christ for so long. We are representing other gods, worshiping other uh, uh, um, idols and everything. And I just get to the point where God said, you know what? The spirit of death and murder is going to release on this land. I mean, people are just getting crazy. I myself was riding down Bobby Jones and I saw a car that was in the fast lane. Everybody know how you try to get off of Winston Spring Road. It's especially around about three, I think from maybe 3.30 to almost six o'clock. It is havoc. I mean, cars lined up. And yes, the woman, that I'm not going to say woman because I don't know who it was. Yes, this individual was wrong. They stopped, almost did a complete stop in the fast lane, tried to get over to get, which that was wrong. But I actually seen this man, why I keep saying man? I actually seen this individual take his SUV and literally run this individual off the road. I mean, off the road. I'm, I'm not saying just, oh, bumping. No, he took his vehicle and he was trying to hit her to the point where he wanted to run her off the road into a ditch and kill her or kill him or her or whoever. And I'm like, what in the world? And this is right in front of me. I truly believe that the guy had a, the guy. I truly believe the individual had a gun. And I mean, and he just took off. I mean, I'm like, whoa. I seen people getting upset and mad and fussing. And I mean, it just, everybody is upset. Everybody is mad. Everybody wants to hurt one another. And it's just, it's just getting to the part, point where it's like they want to kill each other. Riding down the road, man. I mean, cars just cutting in front of each other. Cutting, I mean, just like in between traffic. Doesn't even care who he cut in front of. I mean, and it's just unbelievable the the, the aggravation and frustration and anger that people have putting shooting birdies out. I mean, in the store, people arguing over a car. I mean, literally, this individual going to get ready to do something violent because the spirit of murder. Then we read this in the scripture. Verse 3, look what the Bible says. It says in a 4, and in, no, I'm sorry, it was 3, and it went to another horse, and it was red, and the power was given to it to set therefore on the top place of the earth, and they should kill one another. And they was given to them a great sword. Let's go to verse five. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard a third horse say, a third beast say, Come and see, and behold, a black horse. And he that sat on it had a pair of balance in his hand. And I and that means balancing that means that weighing of, of money and wheat but one of the biggest things that is happening is that God said I'm getting ready to release a spirit of murder where it's going to be so bad where you're not going to be able to walk out your house because of y'all rejecting me you do not care for me you do not worship me you do not wit, uh, 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 call upon me. It used to be a time where when we went through something, instead of we calling Dr. Phil or Oprah or, 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 or anybody else, we'll get on our knees and pray and say, God, we need you. And they're not doing it. God said they're not even calling on me for help. 
They're doing, bringing strange fires. They are worshiping idols. They are going to, they, they are worshiping idols. They are worshiping other gods. I am the true and living God. I am the first and last. And God is saying that now I will turn them over to a reprobated mind. Pro go to me to Proverbs 6. I want you guys to understand what, what's going on and why God, and I'm, I'm going to get to what God spoke to me. I am going to get to where he spoke to me. I know some of y'all probably saying, well, RPI, you, you, you put it up there. What is he saying? I'm finna tell you what he's saying. Because when you're living in a land where you you can't just walk away from God and then think that everything is all right. It does not work like that with God. You can't just say, well, I'm saved now, but tomorrow I won't be saved. You can't just say, well, we put God first. We worship God. And then all of a sudden, bam, God doesn't exist. God don't work like that. He definitely don't work like that. Like Proverbs 6. Now, I want, I want to read this very slow. And... Proverbs 6, let's start with verse 16. I read this before. And it says, let's go to 15. It says, therefore shall, therefore shall his comely one come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken with remedy. The sixth thing does God, the Lord, hate. Yes, seven is abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, a hand that shed innocent blood, um, I mean, when I say innocent blood, I mean, and I'm talking about all the way from killing, I mean, killing people, cop killing, uh, uh, people killing, and one of the biggest things, abortion, killing innocent babies. Going in America, going, let, let me just keep reading all the rest of it, then I, I get to the rest of it, because I want you guys to understand what, what it's coming from. And it said, a heart that diverse wicked images... Feet that swift and in running into mistress, a false witness that speak lies, and he that saw this cause among the brothers. My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not the law of your mother. Now, let's go back over here where it says a proud look, a lying tongue, and a hand that shed innocent blood. All these go together. You ever met somebody that's so proud that they couldn't say nothing to them because they feel like it was better than you and they always lying on you and then they shed innocent blood, meaning that they would do things to see you fall and they'll kill people. This that I read is America. This is America that we are living in. This is America. Now, I'm not talking about Saudi Arabia, Russia, China. I'm talking about America, USA, the same country that stood up for Christ in the same country that is denying Christ. We are having a generation that is such a rebel to socialism sounds good without them actually researching it and understand the word socialism and what it stands for. And, and the spirit that is behind it, socialism means murder. You mean that you are controlled, you have no rights, you have no thought process. You have no control. And this generation right now is saying we want to be a socialist country. That's like Hitler. That's like North Korea. That's like, my God, South Korea, Hong Kong, China, Russia, Venezuela. These are socialist country. And you want to push this. And we went to Revelation 6 and said the red horse is the horse of murder killing death God said you are gonna reject me and don't want nothing to do with me then I will send a spirit of murder now they got this and I and God told me to listen I had to listen I listened to the to the democratic debate and it, it was and I'm sorry it was such hard to swallow and listen to such garbage you know what I'm saying we're gonna take your guns we're gonna do this we're gonna do that and the Bible said, and one of them said, and I don't know, they called a poke hunt, and she said it, and I don't care but for about what she said, but she said, our house divided won't stand. We are so divided in America to, it, it, to the point where you got poor and rich, blacks and whites, uh, 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 you got Korean and, and Mexicans, you got Black Panther and Ku Klux Klan, which them boogers gonna be, they gonna be, uh, separated anyway we are so separate now you got christians 
that against uh 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 uh, uh, uh. you got the Baptists against Pentecostal, you got Seven Day Adventists against Apostolic. I mean, it's just getting to the point where you got Mormons against Jehovah Witness. We are such divided and God say, listen, I am over all you guys. And I listen, I listen to them and I listen to something called the Revolt Summit. And it was a bunch of a black, uh, you know, star rappers and activists and Candace on and all them. And they were talking about everything, how they can help the, what, how the black community this. And then I've listened to the debate and then God came to me and he said, son, Matthew seven, read that. This is, I have you to listen to this because I want you to understand where does my word stand when it comes to me. Y'all, I'm saying this because this is eating me up and it's, it has hurt me because I'm a man that love God and my, my main purpose is to share the gospel. I don't want nobody to die and go to hell. I don't want nobody to go through this and these tears of tears of mourning and tears of please turn right to God. That's what you got to do. When God told me this, he could get rid of sin and spirit of murder. It shook me. It scared me. God say, son, what do you have to worry? You have nothing to worry about because you are following me. I'm going to protect my children that serve me. He say, so why should you worry? I say, God, you gave me this heart of anguish. You gave me this deep pain, this agony, this hurt of Jesus Christ. When he go through every day, when he sit down high and look down low and see the people that he died for just killing themselves and fornicating and drinking and smoking and killing babies and, and doing everything. And you gave me that heart. You gave me this mindset. You gave me this thought process to get up here Tuesday night, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and go out and share this gospel and save as much as soul as I can. So when you tell me you're going to release a spirit of murder, it is aches my spirit it shakes my heart because i know what's going to happen i know how filthy and i know how evil man is and i know when that spirit is in this land i see the turmoil and i see the hell and i see the destruction that's happened and i ask god can you just let us give a chance god said that chances have been done over and over and over again son i can't give no more chances my grace is sufficient but it's about to run out because i'm sitting before a wicked people that do not care about me that i try to give them me and they know i want me and they shoot their fingers at me and they tell they hate me and they go into satanism and they're doing rituals and they killing and they doing everything so how can i be grateful but i say jesus you sent your son to die on the cross for us that was your grace he said, son, over and over again, I have my remit. They out sharing. They getting persecuted. They getting killed. So I have to release the spirit because they left their first love, which is me. All I'm telling you to do is they come back to their first love. Jesus say, y'all come back. God say, come back to your first love. Let all your sins and your lies and your deception and your fornication and your drugs and your alcohol and your homosexuality and your 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 your, your murders and your rapists, your pedophile, let it all go and come back to the first Lord, which is Jesus Christ. God said, What? Come back to me. I got my arms open. My son Jesus Christ have his arm open. Say, come to me. But God said they don't. He said they don't. He said, I have to have persecution in the churches. I have to have persecution in the government. I have to have persecution, fall, destruction. I have to, son. If not, they'll never come back to me. What you think I did to the children of Israel when I put them in slavery for 400 years into the Egyptian? Slavery after slavery. Judgment after judgment. So they can come back to me. God say, the time is running out, son. He said, the time is running out, son. I'm trying to reach all I can. I'm finna send my son back. When he come back, he's going to be like the thief in the night. He's going to grab his people and go. And, I, and it's definitely going to be hell on earth. God say, read Matthew 7. And as I begin to sit in, I begin to just look and pray and ask God this morning. I say, Lord, please just give us a chance. He said, read Matthew 7. And start with, start with verse 13. 
He said, no, 12, he said, therefore all things, whosoever ye, which that men should do to you, do even as to them. For this is the law and the prophet. I'm sorry. Enter into the enter into the straight gate for wide is the gate, but broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many and many there be which I can't hardly read it goes into threat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which lead to life. And and a few of them that be that finds it. Beware of false prophet which comes to you in sheep clothing. But inwardly they are wolves, uh, raging wolves. God said, you see, raging wolves. I didn't just say wolves. He said, I have you can have wolves and raging wolves. Raging wolves just rip through everything. They don't even care about nothing. Raging wolves will kill their own. And he said, you shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns? I mean, uh, thorns and uh, figs and thistle. Even so, every good tree bringeth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth corrupt fruit. A good a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth good fruit is hid down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit you shall know them. And I say, Lord, oh, God, he said, Lord, I say, God, can you just, he say, son, you can tell the wheat from the tear. You know who's good and who's not good. He said, you see what's going on in my churches. You see what's going on in, in the people. You see the hearts. He said, I have to release something to get there, get their point. He said, look at the scriptures. You just read it. Revelation 6. What I released first. Look when I read murder. God said, I made the gate. I have the gate where they can enter in. I made it where they can come in. I told them when they broad is the way lead to destruction. I told them what they doing. But yeah, but at the same time, I even said because the gate, because straight is the gate, the narrow is the way which leads to life. And a few things be that found it. God said, I made the gate straight and narrow. I made it for you to come in. All you got to do is just worship me. Call on my name. God, I love you. Come back to me. But he said, I have more people leaving me than coming to me. There's more people in America leaving God like never before. More people leaving God like never before. God said, you look, you look upon the land. Look at all the things that they are doing. He said, I have to release this. He said, remember when I told you how bad it's going to be and what's going to happen? He said, son, this is when I get ready to release on this land. He said, I'm trying to prepare the people. I am, but they ain't listening. Revelation 13. I'm, I'm trying to read this, y'all, without trying to break down and cry. And I stood up and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. God said, I done send, I'm sending a blasphemy demon. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard and his feet were as a feet of a bear and his mouth as a mouth of a lion and the dragon give him his power, meaning the devil and his seat is great authority. And I saw one of his heads and as they were wounded to death, they wounded to death and his daily wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power to the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who, who is like to the beast who is able to make war with him? Who is able to make war with him? And they were given, given him a mouth 
spoke great things and blasphemy and the power was given unto him continuously 40, 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth, blasphemy against God, blasphemy his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. The power was given over all kindreds of tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship his name are not written into the book of life. The lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And God said, I'm getting ready to release the Antichrist. He's going to be a savior. And people ain't going to know that he is the devil. And they're going to, he's going to bring power. But God said, I have to release this. God said, this is the thing that I'm, this is the thing that is getting ready to happen in this world. God said, I am tired, son. I am so tired. I sit down and I see what's going on. They are killing my children. They are killing. Even in the scripture, it talks about how the saints cry out. And in verse, in uh, Revelation 6, after they talk about all the seals, and, um, and it says, and it said, in a, in a, and they cried out with a loud voice saying, how long, O holy? And they cried out with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true. Do not, do you not judge and average our blood, avenge our blood on that that dwell on the earth. They asking God this. But yet, God tried to give us grace and mercy. And yet, God is trying to, trying to get us in position and tell us, get right with me. I played David Wilkinson because I played to try to get something in y'all head to let y'all see this, this is where we at. God said, when the murder come, he said, you won't even be able to leave your homes. He said, nighttime will be awful. He said, you'll see people rushing at nighttime to go in their house. Anybody ever seen the, the, the movie Purge? The TV series of Purge. This is what's going to happen. There's going to be a purge that's getting ready to happen. A spirit of murder. People are going to be killing it and they wait till nighttime to do it. Why? Because everything in dark, evil rise in darkness, but God rise in light. But see, here's the thing about God. He can rise in that darkness and bring light even if it's night. Even if it's dark. It's a purge. A murder spirit. And God said, I'm getting ready to uh, this spirit is on the land. That's why people so angry. That's why people so mad. And the and, and just to hear people commit suicide, you hear more suicide. See, the media ain't telling you people are dying by the thousands, almost hundreds and hundreds of thousands. I don't want to say millions, hundreds of committing suicide, killing themselves because they being depressed. Some of them being bullied. Some of them just tired, can't make it. So the devil comes in there and weaken their mind and tell them, kill yourself. You're not worth And they murder and killing themselves. The opium crisis. That's what, why you think that these companies are suing all these opium and, and, and companies, these drug administration, these drug companies, because the crisis of murder. Why would you give a person drugs when you know it's addicted and people getting addicted to it and they kill themselves? This is what is happening. Murder ain't just people killing one another. It can be suicide. It can be drug addiction. People just want to kill themselves. Here it is. We are boarding more babies than anything in the world and nobody is not trying to stop it. And I'm sitting there listening to these Democrats talking about Killing babies. Yes, they want to take your guns. Yes, they want to take everything away. But then you got more people die from abortion than people getting shot. Oh, man, you're not going to stop that murder. You can take all the guns you want. But one thing you cannot take away 
is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that's in your heart. You can't take that away. God said, let him take it. Let him take everything, son, because that gun is not your covering. That knife is not your covering. That hole with that big fence around, I am your covering. Son, I can make you walk in the middle of a war zone where people are killing each other, and I cover you all the way from, from to the never ending. For mile after mile, I will cover you because you're my child. I know some of y'all probably saying, RPI, why every Tuesday you come like this, man? Why you can't talk about, because this is where God got me, man. If I had a chance, I'd change this, but I can't. Because this is where God taking me. And I'm glad he is because I don't want to see nobody die and burn into a hell. I don't want to see nobody lose the most precious thing, Jesus Christ, Yahweh, El Shaddai, however you want to call him. It's all the same name. Hatred is such a big thing here in this country. We got so much hate and, and, and racism and oh, I hate you because of your skin. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. That's all I hear. Hate it. Hatred. Hatred. Racism. What you think? Racism. Racism never left. It was always here. You know, I used to sit here all the time. And I always say, you know, oh, I don't see color. I, I can't lie like that. I do see color. You know. I see the way black Omegas are being treated, you know, getting murdered. But God said, yes, all that is awful. But if the people can come back to their first love, which is me, I can fix all that. He said, you know why a cop would never do anything to you? Because you're covered, my son. See, God say, yes, there's a lot of things that I see that are allowed to happen because I'm trying to get people attention. Maybe God trying to get us black folks attention. Maybe God trying to get us white folks attention or Hispanics. Everything happened to everybody. And I used to say, I don't see color, but I do. I can't lie. I do see color. But what else I see is the soul of man, but I don't see color where I hate a person. That would never be in my DNA. I can't hate nobody because I got too much Jesus in me. And even if I try to hate somebody, it would never live in me because I got too much Jesus in me. When you got Jesus, you can't hate. Unless you just flat out God just turn you over to a reprobated mind and, 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 and just, you just totally, Luke, just totally disregard Jesus. Not uh, Don't worship him. Don't do nothing. Just go in there. But I can't. There's too much Jesus in me. Then guess what? If there's too much Jesus in me, then I can't hate. Guess what? If there's too much Jesus in you, you can't hate. Hate is a choice. You, you, you wasn't, you wasn't born to hate blacks or white, Hispanics, Chinese. It was, you were taught that. And I hate when people say, well, I was born this way. I was born gay. I was born an alcoholic. I was born a murderer. I was born a rapist. You chose to be that way. Some of your circumstances, your parents. Racism is one of the most disgusting, degrading, vomiting thing that ever was brought into this nation. Is racism strong among black people? Yes, it is. Because I'm a black man, I know. You know how I know? Because I deal with it. I didn't used to deal. 10, 20 years ago, I didn't deal with racism like I deal with it now. I'm just going to be honest with you. I didn't. And some of it ain't just, it just, more people that look like me. Oh, you dark skinned, you know, look down. I mean, racism. I deal with it every day. But you know what? I may deal with it, but I don't live with it. I live with Jesus Christ. So guess what happened? My love for Christ overthrow anybody with racism. I can have a man that's a part of the Ku Klux Klan can look me down and hurt and hate me and say things about me, but he would not touch me. Not because I'm a big, bad black man and because I'm a big, bad Jesus Christ man and he lives on the inside of me. So when a person comes to me with hate, they have no other choice but to change because Christ, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that live on the inside of me, make them change. And I work with some of them. I, I, I even 
see some of them. I walk in stores and I see, see a white lady grab a pocketbook. She think I'm going to rob or something. And I look and I smile. And then all of a sudden, she comes up to me. Look, hey, uh, excuse me, you can help me out. I'm like, sure. Because of the anointing of God that's in me. Even if I had to deal with it, I know how to deal with it through Christ. See, you got to, we got to understand Christ. All that they were talking about on the radio, all that they were saying at the Democratic Convention and that Revolt Summit, and what that Christ is the only way. Christ is the answer. Christ is the overall answer. A, D, all of the above. Jesus Christ. There is no other way that you can fix this country. There is no other money. There is no financial state. There is no different strategy or no terminology. The only thing is Jesus Christ. J-E-S-U-S Christ. Yahweh. El Shaddai. Ashur. However you want to call him. Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that's going to fix what's broken in our hearts. Until the world gets it, then God can save. But right now, God said, I'm not going to save a, a world. You know what keeping this country together, the remnant that is praying, worshiping, the people that get down on their knees and, and cry for this country, the people that go to churches and, and, and pray, the people at the house, the, the, the guys that witness on the side. And I salute my brothers that's on the corner, on the street corner, drug corner, high corner, pole corner, rap corner, every corner, sharing the gospel, preaching the word of God. I salute you, brothers, because you're the one that keeping this keeping this country falling apart. You're the one that God can not send to Jesus because you try because you're preaching the gospel, trying to give him a chance to get right with God. You know what a witness a, a, a street preacher does? He gets you ready for the coming of Christ. That's what he does. He prepares you for the coming of Christ. I watched my brother-in-law preach a funeral and preach Jesus and see one person stand up and give their life at a funeral because of the word, the potent word of Jesus Christ flowed out of him. And he preached that word and it convicted that individual. And they say, I want to give out of three or 400 people. One stood up. God said, that's all I need. Just give me one. Just give me one. God said, who will stand for me? Pick me, Lord. Pick me, Lord. We got to get back into the fight. The power of God. We, we got an a, a awesome God. We sing the songs. We preach it in the church. We, 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 we shout, we jump, we prophesy, we preach. But when we're going to demonstrate the power of Jesus Christ, when we're going to stand up. God said, son. I got you where you net. I got you where you at now. You are telling these people along you and the many other brothers and sisters that's out radio, street, church. You are the remnant that is sharing the gospel. So my question right now, you that call yourself a Christian, what are you doing for the body of Christ? What are you doing? Are you sharing that gospel? Are you the one that, or are you preaching? And I ain't talking about getting to a church. See, I preach in the church all the time. I preach. But my church is not in the building, but it's on the street corner. It's on the highway. It's on the grocery stores. It's in the Walmart, the Kroger's. My job, wherever I can to, to, to announce my Jesus Christ, that is my church. Church is just a building, but the people is the church. Stop thinking that you got to get in the pulpit and preach to save people or people that want to be saved be right. There's a lot of whole lot of people that don't come to church that you can preach to. Now I'm talking about the spirit of death. Man. I'm telling you something that get ready to hit this nation. That's going to. It, it. Oh, Lord Jesus. Uh, listen, excuse me for being loud or, or, or being. Uh, um. I just want you guys to understand where we at in 19, uh, 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 September 17, 2019, where we at as a nation, as a country, where we at and where God is seeing us. I want you to understand that. I want you to know that Jesus Christ coming 
We, 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 we just don't, it's like we don't comprehend that. He is coming soon. Soon. I ain't talking about it could be tonight. I can he could come right now, next week, next month, next year. But he is coming and it's soon. All you see that is happening in this nation, in this country, all the way down from the White House, all the way down from the pole house. You seeing God power being demonstrated. There are more school. Man, I'm telling you, oh my God. God said there's gonna be more shootings that you're gonna you can count. Some of y'all, you better be praying. You better, oh Lord. Let's, 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 oh, thank you, Jesus. Ooh, Lord. Let's go to, let's go to Psalms 91. I know some of y'all probably know Psalms 91. I said this before. Lord have mercy. I, I'm, I'm, I can't even, I can't even, there we go. I can't even find a scripture. So God told me, he said, and I'm going to read this because God told me to read it to y'all. Psalms 91. God said, this is the scripture that you're going to need to read when you leave your house because that's bad it's going to be. Some of y'all go to Walmart, you go out. See, people think, well, you got to go to a club and all. No, you ain't got to go to no club no more. They shooting at churches. The church. They're shooting at churches. Why? Because God said, how can I protect the church that don't represent me? But the pastor. So why should I put my angels around a church that do not represent me? Some of you pastors, you better watch what you preaching. You better watch what you saying. Some of you church folks, you better watch how you talk about folks. God said he's only going to protect the true churches that's sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not the ones that sit up there trying to make it about him. Man, we got churches struggling. Can't even keep the doors open. But yet every day they go out there and pour their heart out. Pour the heart out of Jesus Christ, preaching the sermon, trying to save souls. Stop trying to lie to these people and tell them it's okay that you can live like a sinner. It's okay to get high. Stop preaching this hell doctrine and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. There used to be a time where we, we the, the church used to be respected. The church was a place where people can come to and know that I'm safe. Games when a when a when a gay member run into the church, I'm safe. When a drug dealer get chased by the cops, I'm safe. When a, when a, when a wife getting beat by a husband, I'm safe. When children was getting raped and molested, go to church, I'm safe. Now they they go into church and the pastor or the people in the church rape, hurt, kill, or do something to the people, and God said, I'm not going to protect. A den of thieves like that. Psalms 91. This is the scripture that y'all gonna have to start reading. I'm reading it now. I've been reading it. When I go to work over my children, I'm reading it. Say, he who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snails or the flowers and from the Noah's pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust his truth. Shall be your buckle, shall be your shield and buckle. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walk in darkness. Hmm, there I go again. Nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. So this thing says it's going to be destruction. Let me go ahead and read it. Let me go ahead and read it. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand side. This is the power that God's given you to cast down devils. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the rewards of the wicked because you have made the Lord, which is your refuge, even the most high, your habitation. You shall, there shall no evil befall you, neither shall no plague come near you. Oh my God, I forgot about the plague. Your dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall not tread upon the lions. Adder the young lions and the dragons shall not trample under your feet. Because you have set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him high because he has known my name. His spirit called upon me. I will 
I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And I would look with long life where I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Y'all, you better get this highlighted. You better memorize this scripture. You better put it in your heart because this is what get ready to go to save you. God said nighttime, morning time is going to be that bad. And some of y'all saying, well, RPI, are oh, you just running out the mouth? You may, that's right. I am running out the mouth. Take it how you want it. You can take it for yourself or take it down the road. I don't really care. I'm just a messenger. I say this because I love you. I love in each and every one of you. Some of you sitting out here in your cars, in your house, in your home, at work, and you hear my voice. And I know it's pricking and tickling prickling your heart and flowing through your ears because you hear me and you know I say this and you know where I'm coming from and you know what I say listen I am liable for what I do do you know I can mess up tomorrow and I can die and go straight to hell don't think because I'm here at the radio station oh I'm so righteous oh I'm saved man I fight every day I have to die daily every day every single day I repent Every single day, I ask God to work in my heart, fix my heart, change my heart, my mind. Sir, I see stuff that bothers me every single day to keep my sanity every single day. You know, deal with racism every single day. Deal with hate every single day. Deal with, 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 with fornication. Every single day. Yes, I'm a man. I see women. Every single day. Not to go there and get sometimes I want to take a crack a beer open and just drink it because I'm stressed out. Every single day. But every single day, I worship, I praise, I live, I love, I call on Jesus Christ. Because I ain't going to no Dr. Phil or Oprah and talk to them about my problem. I'm going to somebody greater. Somebody who created both these people to put them in a position where they're at, even if they don't know Christ. I'm talking about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's who I talk to every single day. Some of y'all sitting here and you know your life ain't right. Some of y'all know you if you die right now, you go straight to hell. Some of y'all pimping and, and playing and tiptoeing, playing with the devil, having secrets with the devil doing certain things. Some of you men doing stuff you didn't know that ain't right, but yet you try to hide it. Some of you women doing stuff, you know, some of you children doing things you know ain't right. You better get it while getting this good. This spirit of death is ugly. They're already talking about pestilence, plagues, thing that's getting ready to hit this nation. See, I, I didn't mention all that, all these plagues. Spirit, they're just killing us. Plagues, it's pestilence, and people going to start. You're going to see, we're already seeing people sleeping on the street corner because they, they lost their house and home. California is just God-awful. Detroit is God-awful. Here in Augusta, it's God-awful. New York City, God-awful. Tennessee, God-awful. Wyoming, God-awful. Because we steady rejecting Jesus. Why can't we just get down and fall down and worship him? And you know one thing God spoke to me. He said, son, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, despite of the Democrat, despite of Republican, your president, the, uh, the, uh, this, uh, um, uh, what you call it, uh, revolt summit. God and God forbid, I hope you don't watch it. was so much profanity. I couldn't watch it all. It was just too rough, too rough. But I wanted to hear what they had to say dealing with black people. God said, at the end of the day, every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. I don't care if you're trying to save every black person in the world, trying to get community. As in what, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you represent Christ, there's nothing wrong with the white community trying to represent white folk. As long as you do it with Christ, I don't care. Matter of fact, let's get everybody together and try to lift us up and do it with Christ. I don't care what you stand for. Ku Klux Klan, Black Panther, Black Israelite, 
homosexual, lesbian, gay, let's do it all. LBTQ community, heterosexual, rich, poor, uh, government that's trying to control your people, socialism, every knee shall bow, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You will, atheist, Jehovah Witness, Muslim, all y'all gonna confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You're gonna fall down on that knee and you're gonna worship him. And you're going to say Jesus Christ. Every knee, every tongue shall bow and say Jesus Christ is Lord. There's nothing that you're going to can do about that. Do it now or do it in hell. One of the two. You better make a decision. This is RPI. Well, this God gave them up onto vile affections. See you next Tuesday on In the Last Days. I am the host of the show, RPI Radio, Pastor Isaac. And I poured, I cried, I preached, and I gave you my heart. I had given you what God has been giving me. Please take this. Don't care about getting likes. Don't care who listen. I don't care. I don't care about that. All I care about is obeying God, doing his will, and saving souls for Christ. My last words, fornication, wickedness, get right with God. Because the spirit of murder is in this land. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful day. I love y'all. Bye-bye. Despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. I want to say this too, and, and I'm off the radio, and, and, and I want to talk to the people of Facebook. And um, I, I'm saying this because I know Facebook has an outlet. And I'm just telling y'all, please, if you listen to me at the sign of my voice, share the gospel. Tell the people about Christ. I'm asking y'all, I'm begging you, please. This spirit of murder is going to hit this. It's already hitting this nation and it's going to get worse. 2020 is going to be a rough, tough year for America. I know we got a lot of uh, uh, prophets and prophetess and we got a lot of watchmen. You guys get on the board. I'm not telling, hey, share this. Please share this. I, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not looking to get likes or nothing. I'm looking to get soul saved. That's what I'm looking. Man, we 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 in a trying time. And it's like God speaking to me every day. Sometimes he want me to tell me things. Sometimes he hold back. But he said, I want you to release and let the people know. So you guys, y'all do that. Share that gospel. Don't be afraid. I'll talk to you guys later.